All right, next section is section 2.2 this week, and that would be data classification. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to classify the data that you're working with. Let's jump right into our PowerPoint. Oh, hold on. Sorry about that. I shared my whole screen, but I really just want to share the PowerPoint. Just in case any pop-ups come up on my computer, you're not seeing that too. <laughs> it's happened. Okay, let's put this in presentation mode. And we're ready. Okay, data classification. So data in which the observations are restricted to a set of values um, that possess gaps is called discrete. Now that made no damn sense, right? So discrete data is countable, countable whole numbers, one, two, three, four, five, you can count. So if you know that you don't count in the negatives on a typical day, I'm not counting negative plants in my yard, then that's not discrete. So discrete starts with a count of one, two, three, four, five. There's no decimals. There's no fractions. There's no infinitely many numbers between one and two. It's discrete. So the number of people in attendance in a play, uh, the number of cars on the highway at any given time, the number of blades of grass out there, although those would be a pain in the butt to count, they're still countable. It's one, two, three, four, five. Money is countable. So even though technically when you're writing money, it has decimals, think more like coins. It's one penny, two penny, three penny, and it is countable. On the other hand, the other type of data that we have is continuous. So continuous data is that has all those infinitely many decimals from one to two, so the real numbers. Uh, so that would be like time, okay? Time is continuous. From one minute to two minutes, time doesn't just stop between minutes. There's seconds and milliseconds and tiny seconds, a lot of seconds. And another good example would be uh, distance. So as you're driving, you don't, or even running, like you don't run one mile instantly. You have a lot of distance to cover before you hit that one mile mark because this is continuous data. Okay, there are different levels of measurement. Um, so there are four levels of measurement and the very basic level is the nominal level. So that is the very, 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 very most basic level of measurement. And that includes categories, labels, anything that doesn't have a specific order to it. So like colors, um, and I should say a meaningful order, order because color is technically you've like, well, the, the rainbow has an order to the colors, but that's not a meaningful order. I mean, like um, if I was talking about a list of Netflix shows, that's nominal data. But if I put those Netflix shows on a website and I ask people to vote for their favorite and now I have a ranking. OK, so a ranking is a meaningful order and that would make the ranked Netflix shows go up a notch to the next level of measurement called ordinal. And I love the fact that the word ordinal starts with what sounds like the word order. So ordinal data is essentially nominal data that is ordered. So this is still primarily categorical data. So categories, labels, stuff like that, but stuff that happens to have an order now. No math can be done on neither the nominal or the ordinal level of measurement. So there's no adding, subtracting, or anything like that. It doesn't make sense on these levels. Now, math comes into play once we get to the third and the fourth level. So our third level is interval measurement. And so our interval measure of data, it is numerical. So we are talking about numbers now. Um, arithmetic can be done on this level of measurement. And the same can be said about the fourth. Now I'm gonna do these at the same time because there's a very slight difference between the two. So ratio is the fourth level of measurement. And the really the only difference between interval and ratio, because they're all numbers, how do you know how to put one in interval and one in ratio? And it has to do with the zero. In the interval level, the third level, um, that zero does not mean 
nothing. Okay, so it's a, it's, it's a number on the number line, but it doesn't mean the absence of. So for example, temperature. Zero degrees Fahrenheit does not mean the absence of heat. It's just really freaking cold. And we can go into the negative. Um, zero for pant size. Doesn't mean you don't exist. You definitely exist. You're just really thin. Okay, so when the zero doesn't mean non-existent, you are in the interval level. When the zero means absolutely nothing exists, that's when you know you're in the ratio level. So for example, if I say that I have been awake for zero seconds, well, that's the absence of time. Zero seconds means that there's no time. Nothing has started ticking yet. Or I have driven zero miles to work so far. Okay, so those are all in the ratio level because zero miles per hour for speed means you're not moving. It's the absence of movement. So for example, is money a ratio variable? Well, let's see, ratios at the very top and the last, the fourth level of measurement, ratio, means that the zero has to mean nothing exists. Well, if I have zero dollars to my name, <laughs> yeah, I don't have any money. So yes, I would say that money is a ratio level. Okay, there is another way to describe it. Ratio, think of division. If the division makes sense, um, then they say it's in the ratio level. I find that way of looking at things to be quite confusing and really complicated since ratio and interval are both numbers. So it's hard to discern whether the ratio makes sense. So I highly recommend you focus more on the zero. So between the categorical and numerical were the two words I was using throughout this lecture, but they have very specific names. So qualitative is the quality or the categorical data. And the quantitative, quantity, it means the numerical data. So you have either qualitative or quantitative. Now let's do a quick little chart of examples, the difference between qualitative and quantitative, because I do find that we can easily mistaken um, some examples very easily because they look like numbers, but they're considered numerical. So let's just make a quick chart. Let's put qualitative here on this side. Qualitative. And let's put that versus quantitative. So I'm sure there's some straightforward examples like qualitative qualities, categories, so like colors or your major or your race. Okay, those are all categorical or qualitative. And some quantitative variables, money. Okay, we can add and subtract money, totally makes sense. Um, distance, time, stuff like that. Now, things that you may not right off the bat see that they're numbers, but they're not actually quantitative would be like your student ID number. Okay, your student ID number is a number, but it doesn't make sense to add and subtract each other's student IDs. No, not at all. ISBN numbers are also qualitative because there's no reason to add or subtract or social security numbers. Um, all of those types of numbers are not numbers that we would consider to be quantitative because you can't add or subtract, multiply, divide them. Okay, this concludes this section about um, data classification.